dear students good morning how are you all i hope all are fine at home so today in this video we are going to learn about the early revolts against the british in tamil nadu okay early revolts the fight the war that took place in tamil nadu against the british rule here in tamil nadu in this late 17th century and the early 18th century and onwards so uh, after three carnatic wars three carnatic wars that means the wars that took place in karnataka between british and the france french people french army french army had its alliance indian alliance okay along with the indian alliance french fought with the british british also had its indian alliance okay indian alliance so in the three carnatic wars the french troop was defeated by the british so after the great success the british east india company wanted to expand you know aggrandize aggrandize meant means it wanted to uh, expand its territory here in tamil nadu it, it started grabbing the places the territories here in tamil nadu okay so why it is called east india company you all know to europe india situated in the east side okay so when they started their company here in india they kept the name east india company okay they are actually east india company the british company is called east india company okay so here in tamil nadu the first chief dain the first you know person who opposed the british rule here in tamil nadu is puli theva puli theva of nerkattum seval okay tirunelveli district nerkattum seval is a place in tirunelveli district okay he was the first person who fiercely opposed the uh, english people the british east india company's aggrandizement you know so uh, after uh, puli theva you know marudu brothers kattabomman and velu nachiyar so many deeran chinnamalai all fought against the british till their death they fought with patriotic you know feeling and till the end they did not give up their thought and they fought for the freedom of tamil nadu so in this uh, video very clearly we are going to see one by one about the uh, valor you know how you know till the end they you know they without giving their without giving their aim without giving their you know without any i uh, you know what to say uh, till the end they fought uh, with the british we are going to see in this video so before going to see about puli thevar let's know about palayams or palayakarars what is palayam and what is palayakarars let's see there were actually 72 palayams here in tamil nadu so palayakarar palayam is a system actually introduced by pradaba rudra of varangal kakatiya kingdom in andhra pradesh actually this system was introduced you know by pradaba rudra of varangal kakatiya in the 16th century you know in the early 16th century he started in kak in varangal of andhra pradesh okay so it is actually what it is what is palayam what is palayakara system feudal system actually feudal system means the person who works for the emperor who works for the king okay so in the army that person you know like a leader he will be given a particular place a region to rule that entire place will be in the control of that particular person who fought for the big king okay so it is a kind of a gift from the king to the person okay feudal system it is called a feudal system actually so like this here in tamil nadu it is first introduced by viswanatha nayakar in the year 1529 so when he 
established nayakar rule in madurai he brought this feudal system to tamil nadu okay along with he was supported by his minister aryanadar so along with his minister aryanadar vishwanatha nayakar brought this feudal system in the name of palayakarar to tamil nadu okay so traditionally there were 72 palayams in tamil nadu so i hope that you understood what is palayams and feudal system there is nothing difference between feudal system and palayam both are the same actually so uh, the there were two blocks the palayams the uh, 72 palayams were divided into two blocks eastern eastern palayams and western palayams okay eastern palayams the important eastern palayams were satur nagalapuram etayapuram panjalanguruchi so all these are important eastern palayams and the western palayams were uthumalai talavan kotai naduvan kuruchi singampatti and seidu so now uh, do you understand the eastern and western palayams so now let's see uh, puli thevar first uh, already as i told you already the first person who opposed the british rule in tamil nadu okay so in march 1755 mafus khan who was mafus khan brother of the nawab of arkad mafus khan was the brother of nawab of arkad mafus khan marudu uh marudanaayagam do you have you heard about marudanaayagam even kamal tried to take a film called marudanaayagam before 15 to 20 years still he could not take that so based on mafus khan i you know the story of mafus khan marudanaayagam the other name for mafus khan was marudanaayagam his original name was marudanaayagam actually so what is that here what is the significance of marudanaayagam here that is mafus khan here he was the brother of nawab of arkad so he was mafus khan was sent with the contingent of the company army under colonel heron to tirunelveli so in order to grab the place of tirunelveli they invaded tirunelveli with the help of colonel heron colonel heron mafus khan along with the uh, troop of you know colonel heron came to tirunelveli okay they had invaded tirunelveli do you understand so madurai easily fell into their hands so in the war that took place in madurai their you know colonel heron and mafus khan's army won the battle okay easily they could grab madurai okay so colonel heron was urged to deal with puli thevar in that time the east india company urged you know uh, colonel heron to you know invade tirunelveli because as i told you already puli thevar was the first person who did not like who did not accept the rule of british so colonel heron was urged to deal with deal with puli thevar so after madurai's war Colonel Heron Puli Thevar wielded much influence over the western palayakarars for want of cannons and supplies of and pay to the uh, soldiers Colonel Heron abandoned the plan and retired to Madurai Heron was recalled and dismissed from service so now what happened but Puli Thevar was a very strong person here in Tirunelveli districts he had a great support he wielded wielded means he got a great help from the western palayakarars i told you the two blocks eastern palayams and western palayams all the western palayakarars were with the side of tirunelveli so along with along with puli thevar they also were against the rule of british here in tamil nadu so when colonel hara uh, uh, sorry colonel heron came to uh, invade came to uh, fight with puli thevar he could not you know he could not win in the war because too much of money he had to spend because uh, with very bravely puli thevar along with the western palayakarars he fought with the, the colonel heron so he could not pay uh, the amount to the soldiers and so he went back to madurai so what happened the company east india company called back heron 
you know by thinking that he is not a able person to defeat the puli teva so thus colonel heron was called back to uh, the company okay uh, and he was dismissed from his position is it understood so next let's see confederacy and alliance with enemies of the british so now puli teva had a com- confederacy means what had an alliance with other people he started getting help from french people already uh, you all know french and british there was no uh, you know good uh, relationship with, uh, between french and the british so pul understanding that puli teva tried to get the support of french is it understood so uh, he is uh, confid- confederated confederated means confederacy had a secret alliance with other palankaras not only with other palankaras uh, you know and also from french french army and also he wanted to get help from hyder ali hyder ali of mysore hyder ali so but he did not get the support of the raja of ramanadapuram and also pudukottai except raja of ramanadapuram and pudukottai he got almost the help of all other palayakaras along with that he got help from france also but he could not get hyder ali's help because he wanted to actually hyder ali wanted to help uh, puli teva but already he was uh, you know he was already he was facing problem from the marathas marathas see hyder ali uh, karnataka Uh, he was the you know sultan of king of karnataka so abo karnataka which place you all know abo karnataka maharashtra uh, you know uh, in the map abo karnataka which place is there karnataka is there sorry uh, maharashtra is there so already he was facing problem Ka- uh, Ma- maharashtra is called maratha mara marathiers means the people of maharashtra are called marathiers you know in those days so already hyder ali was facing problem with the marathas okay so uh, he could not help puli teva so next kalakkad battle it is a very significant battle kalakkad battle the nawab sent an additional contingent of sepoys to mafuz khan so arkad nawab arkad nawab's brother mafuz khan uh, mafuz khan's name marudanaigam don't uh, please forget marudanaigam uh, he was renamed as mafuz khan he was the brother, brother of nawab of arkad so in order to defeat puli teva in addition to that already he sent uh, group you know uh, army people a vast number of army people along with that 2000 sepoys were sent in order to defeat puli teva is it understood and the reinforced army proceeded to tirunelveli reinforced army means the additional 2000 soldiers okay after the uh, addition of 2000 soldiers it is reinforced actually you know so along with that it was marching towards tirunelveli in order to defeat puli teva try to bring the scene in your mind only then it will uh, it will be there in your mind or else you'll forget if you keep you know the data as raw material in your mind you cannot uh, you know uh, you cannot remember all these things like story you have to keep in your mind okay when you read or when you hear it should come as a scene it it should come as a film in your mind only then you can remember so what happened mafuz khan received 600 more sent by the nawab along with 2000 600 more was sent by uh, nawab of arkad to mafuz khan in order to defeat puli teva in tirunelveli he also had the support of cavalry and foot soldiers uh, from the karnatak so along with that from karnataka he got all the skill mafuz khan uh, got all the skill before mafuz khan could station his troops near kalakadu 2000 soldiers from trivankur joined the forces of puli teva what happened in the side of puli teva he got 2000 soldiers from kerala trivankur kerala so trivankur raja 
came to help you know pulitever he sent 2000 soldiers okay and before the mafus khan's troops army people stationed means you know came to tirunelveli his 2000 soldiers came from kerala to help tirunelveli so main place kalakadu is a battlefield where the war took place between uh, pulitever and the uh, you know uh, mafus khan army mafus khan so what you have to understand here mafus khan arkad nawab was in the side of british don't get confusion okay so arkad nawab was in the side of british so he i uh, you know he was supporting arkad nawab was supporting the british by waging war against pulitheva so he sent his brother mafus khan to defeat pulitheva is it understood now my dears okay so in the battle at kalakadu mafus khan's mafus khan's troops were routed that means what in the battlefield kalakadu kalakadu in tirunelveli district who won the battle first in the beginning you know pulitheva won in the battle is it understood so now let's see yusuf khan and pulitheva the you know let's see uh, the relationship between yusuf khan and pulitheva the organized resistance of the palaikaras under pulitheva gave an opportunity to the english to interfere directly in the affairs of tirunelveli aided by the raja of trivancore from 1756 to 1763 the palayakarars of tirunelveli led by pulitheva were in a constant state of rebellion against the nawab's authority so in the uh, uh, kalakadu battle itself we you know came to know that the raja of trivancore was in the side of tirunelveli you know uh, pulitheva so till he got help from you know the raja of trivancore that is from kerala they were against strongly resist the power of east india company here in tamil nadu is it understood so yusuf khan also known as khan sahib the other name for yusuf khan is khan sahib khan sahib marudanaigam three names please keep it in your mind yusuf khan khan sahib marudanaigam all these three persons are the same okay so or before the conversion to islam marudanaigam so he converted to islam before that he also a tamilian his name was marudanaigam so khan sahib mafus khan marudanaigam all these three are the same persons same okay understood so next who had been sent by the company was not prepared to attack pulitheva unless the big guns and ammunition from tiruchirappalli arrived so he did not want to suddenly attack you know pulitheva because he understood very well if without you know uh, uh, necessary uh, you know ammunition and soldiers he understood very well that he could not win pulitever that is why he was waiting for extra ammunition and you know soldiers he was waiting for the ammunition okay is it understood so as the english were at war with the french as well as with hyder ali and marathas the artillery arrived only in september 1760 he was waiting there in tirunelveli but he could not yusuf khan could not you know uh, could not get the wanted necessary equipments for waging war because the british could not send immediately because already the british you know even after the three carnatic wars there was a continuous you know war you know between the france and french and the english so it was facing british east india company was facing problem with the french people and also with the marathas a great you know what to say a great resistance the british faced from the marathas okay so marathas and also from karnataka so it could not till in the year 1760 it could not send the expected Uh, ammunition and weapons for yusuf khan so till then uh, yusuf khan was waiting okay w- without waging war against pulitheva is it understood 
So, Yusuf Khan began to batter the Nirkatam Seval Fort and this attack continued for about two months. On 16th May 1761, Puli Tevar's three major fort, three important forts, okay, Kotai, forts of Puli Tevar, Nirkatam Seval, Vasudevan Allur Court, uh, Fort, sorry, Vasudevan Allur Fort and Panayur. So, all these three places, in these three places, Puli Tevar had a very big forts. Okay, Nirkatam Seval, Vasudevan Allur and Panayam. So, in all these three places, courts were demolished by Yusuf Khan. Is it understood? So, uh, came under the control of Yusuf, Yusuf Khan. So, it was all these three uh, forts were demolished and Thirunelveli came under the control of Yusuf Khan. Is it understood? So, in the meantime, after taking Pondicherry, the English had eliminated the French from the picture. As a result of this, the unity of Palaikarars began to break up as French support was not forthcoming. So, now the Palaikarars lost their help from France because it was completely, you know, uh, won by the British. They were completely defeated by the British. So, after that, the France could not help the Palaikaras. The help completely stopped by the France to Puliteva and the other Palaikaras. Trivankur, Seidur, Uthumalai and Surandai switched their loyalty to the opposite camp. What happened? I know, knowing that they could not win British, they started, you know, showing friendship with the British. These uh, you know, Palaikaras, which are the thing, Seidu, Trivankar, even Kerala, you know, Trivankur Raja and Seidu, Uthumalai Palayams of uh, Tamil Nadu and Surandai, they switched their friendship, switched off their friendship to uh, Pulitever and started showing uh, friendship to the British people. Yusuf Khan, who was negotiating with the Palaikarars without informing the company administration, was charged with treachery and hanged in 1764. Yusuf Khan, 1764. So, so many negotiation, negotiation, negotiation Yusuf Khan had with, you know, the Palaikarars, the other Palaikarars, without informing to the East India Company, he had all this negotiation. What is negotiation? You know, uh, to come to a uh, decision after a speech. Okay. So, he had a speech uh, with the Palayakaras, the other Palayakaras of Tamil Nadu without informing the East India Company. So, he was found treachery. What is the treachery? Rajadrogam. So, he was called and he was killed. Okay. He was hanged by charging treachery rajadrogam okay is it understood though he helped the british but he was hanged by the british so this is the end of yusuf khan or marudanayagam the other name khan sahib all these three are the same person fall of puli Tevar. after the death of khan sahib khan sahib yusuf khan puli Tevar returned from exile so he was in exile he escaped and he was living, you know, you know, in a hidden place. So, what happened? And recaptured Nirkatum Seval in 1764. So, after the death of Yusuf Khan, okay, till then he was in exile. So, after that he wanted to recapture Nirkatum Seval Fort. So, he attacked, uh, you know, he uh, tried to recapture Nirkatum Seval. Uh, however, he was defeated by Captain Campbell. Campbell, Captain Campbell, in the year 1767, Puli Tevar escaped and died in exile. So, in the war that uh, took place between uh, Puli Tevar and Captain Campbell, Captain Campbell. In the year 9, 1767, Puli Tevar was defeated, okay, but he escaped from there, but he died 
in the exile itself okay so this is the end of puli teva so next to puli teva so when we read about puli teva we should know about ondi viran ondi viran a great you know soldier in the army of puli teva ondi viran his name was ondi viran ondi viran led one of the army units of puli teva fighting by the side of puli teva he caused much damage to the company's army according to oral tradition in one battle ondi viran's hand was chopped off and puli teva was saddened but ondi viran said it was a reward for his penetration into enemy's fort causing many heads to roll see ondi viran uh, he was a main you know soldier sipai of uh, in one of the troops of puli teva so he was his one hand was chopped chopped off but you know uh, when puli teva was saddened to see ondi viran when he lost his hand but ondi viran said it is a gift to me when i killed so many when i made so many you know heads roll down on the floor that means he killed so many people in the enemy camp so he, he took that as a gift you know yeah, he did not feel for his loss of hand but he felt very happy that it is a gift he received you know when he tried when he killed so many in the enemy army so ondi viran next to puli teva let's see velu nachiyar velu nachiyar a very great freedom fighter a women who was known for her bravery okay velunachya born in 1730 to the raja sellamuthu sedupadi her father name was sellamuthu sedupadi he was a raja of ramanadapuram ramanadapuram's raja sellamuthu sedupadi is only daughter velunachiyar okay he was the only daughter for this royal family the king had no male heir you all know what is heir varis okay so the royal family brought up velunachiyar as you know a princess training her in martial arts like valery stick fighting and wield weapons like a man you know like a prince this princess was brought up by the royal family okay so she was also adept in horse riding and archery and apart from her proficiency in english french and urdu though she born in tamil nadu she learned french english and urdu okay she was very good at archery horse riding valery okay wielding weapons everything she learned okay so at the age of 16 velunachiyar was married to muthu vadugar okay muthu vadugar the raja of sivagangai muthu vadugar was a raja of sivagangai she got married at the age of 16 to muthu vadugar raja of sivagangai okay and had a daughter by name vellachi nachiyar what is the name of her daughter vellachi nachiyar in 1772 the nawab of arkad and the company troops under the command of lieutenant lieutenant colonel bonjour stormed the kalayar kovil palace in the ensuing battle muthu vadugar was killed so as i told you already the british wanted to establish their you know territories here in tamil nadu so they invaded ramanadapuram sivagangai so he did not uh, what to uh, you know velunachiyar's husband muthu vaduga there was a fight between the british and he and in that he was killed okay so muthu vadugar was killed in the war velunachiyar escaped with her daughter and lived under the protection of gopalanayaka 
at virupachi near dindukal for 8 years nearly 8 years she was under the production of gopala nayaka okay so during the period in hiding velu nachiyar organized she was not quiet okay she organized an army and succeeded in securing an alliance with not only gopala nayaka but haider ali from karnataka she tried to get the help from karnataka you know karnataka nawab haider ali so talavai talavai means military chief talavai தாண்டவராயனார் ரோட் அ லெட்டர் டு சுல்தான் ஹைதர் அலி ஆன் பிகாஃப் ஆஃப் வேலு நாச்சியார் ஆஸ்கிங் ஃபார் ஃபைவ் தௌசண்ட் இன்ஃபேண்ட்ரி அண்ட் ஃபைவ் தௌசண்ட் கேவல்ரி டு டிஃபீட் த இங்கிலீஷ் ஸோ ஹிஸ் சாரி வேலு நாச்சியார்ஸ் தலவாய் இந்த சீஃப் ஏனோ தலவாய் ஹிஸ் நேம் வாஸ் தாண்டவரா தாண்டவராயனார் ஹி ரோட் அ லெட்டர் டு ஹைதர் அலி ஆஸ்கிங் ஃபைவ் தௌசண்ட் கேவல்ரி and 5000 infantry that is soldiers in order to fight against the british is it understood so velunachiyar explained in detail in urdu already we have learned that she in, that she knew english french and also urdu so she wrote the letter in urdu to haider ali she conveyed her strong determination to fight the english very clearly she wrote in that letter through urdu till the end she won't accept the rule of british so she firmly conveyed the message that she will fight against the british till the end so impressed by her courage either ali ordered his commanded sayed in dindukal for to provide the required military assistance so by reading the letter sent by velu nachiyar you know either ali the you know uh, the nawab the king of karnataka he was much in, in impressed by the letter of velu nachiyar so he immediately ordered you know to give her the required army in order to fight with the british velu nachiyar employed agents for gathering intelligence to find where the british had stored their ammunition so she his uh, sorry her soldiers spied the places where the english had their ammunitions their you know the accumulation of what to say the heap of weapons is called here ammunitions so she found out through her soldiers the place where they hidden the ammunitions the weapons for the you know war so with military assistance from gopala nayaka and haider ali she recaptured sivagangai she was crowned as queen with the help of marudu brothers she was the first female ruler or queen to resist the british colonial power in india so thus she recaptured sivagangai fort with the help of marudu brothers they were very loyal to muthuvadugar marudu brothers okay about them also we are going to learn in later part of this lesson so let's read let's know about gopala nayaka the palaya karar of virupachi gopala nayak spearheaded what is spearheaded he was a head he organizer you know a very good organizer is called spearheaded you know a leader we can say in other words uh, the famous dindukal league which was formed with lakshmi nayak of manapare and pujay nayak of dev devanaya devi sorry devanada patti he drew inspiration from tipu sultan who sent a deputation to show his camaraderie he led the resistance against the british from coimbatore and later joined umaythurai kattabomans brother who was umaythurai kattabomans brother was umaythurai about them also we are going to learn in the later part of this lesson he put up a fierce fight at anai malai hills where the local peasants gave him full support so but gopala nayaka was overpowered by the british forces in 1801 so gopala nayaka we learnt already he was the one nearly 8 years okay under his support only velu nachiyar you know nearly 8 years he gave support to velu nachiyar so next kuili kuili like ondiviran okay ondiviran so when we heard the name ondiviran immediately uh, tip uh, sorry 
Puli Tevas name should come in our mind. Puli Tevas army should come in our mind. Like that, Velunachiyar's troop, Velunachiyar's army, the Kuili, a girl called uh, Kuili, a faithful friend of Velunachiyar, said to have led the unit of women soldiers. He was the head of a women soldiers. Okay, that organized, that women uh, troop was named as Udayal. Why it is named as Udayal? Udayal is the name of a troop, you know, one of the troop of army of Velunachiyar. It was named as Udayal because Udayal was a shepherd girl who was killed for not divulging information on Kuili. Udayal, when the British, you know, uh, asked Kui, uh, Udayal to show the place of Kuili, she did not say anything about Kuili. So thus she was killed by the British. So as a gratitude that troop name was that women troop was uh, name was kept as Udayal. So the Udayal's troops leader, who was the leader now? Kuili was the leader of that Udayal uh, troop. Kuili is said to have walked into the British arsenal. Arsenal means the ammunition, uh, you know, a place uh, where the weapons were kept. It's called arsenal. After setting herself on fire, thus destroying all the ammunition. So, she fired herself. After that, what did she do? She went inside the ammunition, a very great arsenal where the British and the Nawab had kept their, you know, weapons, ammunition in that place. She went inside, thus without, you know, uh, bothering about her life, she entered into the ammunition arsenal and died and thus she created, you know, uh, caused a great damage to the ammunition arsenal of the British. So, thus, Kuili and Ondiviran both were loyal friends of, you know, Kuili, loyal friend of Velunachyar and Ondiviran, loyal friend of a very important soldier of Puliteva. So, the remaining uh, lesson we will see in our next class. Thanks for watching dear students.